Did you know that when you go to church, everything is planned and staged? Oh, the scandal. Let's take a look. From the moment you drive onto the property, you're being manipulated. Oh, really? And how is that? Why do you think they're holding signs in the parking lot telling you that you're family when they've never met you? Eh, Romans 12, 13 alert. Romans 12, 13 alert. And the happy, shiny people that are greeting you at the door? They're trained. Well, of course they're trained. Have you ever stood at a door with a brochure in your hand and tried to greet a total stranger? That can be a very awkward situation. And what we're doing is making them feel comfortable so they can make you feel comfortable. And if you're a first-time guest, you're going to get swag, you're going to get gift cards, maybe even free coffee from the church cafe. Then well, then, boy, would you have loved Paul's church. They went way beyond this and got physical with their hospitality. And there's the pre-service music, the countdown, the worship set, the transitions, the announcements, the offering, the message, the altar call, the dismissal, and your exit. All planned. 1 Corinthians 14.40 alert! 1 Corinthians 14.40 alert! I was on a worship team and we had a green room. And we were told to not stay in the green room before the service and in between services, but to go into the lobby and talk to people to make people feel connected. So that when they see you on the stage, they can relate to you. As worship leaders, we are not performers. We are ministers who are leading God's people before the very throne of God. Who would you be more likely to follow there? Somebody who had been aloof in a back room or somebody who came out and was friendly with you? And to make sure that that worship set is clean and there's no hiccups, we've already done a run through. We've already practiced the entire set several times. When this is not about manipulating the audience. This is about giving our best to God. If you want to know how God feels when we don't give him our best, see Malachi chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. One time I was doing a special song after the message, and during the run-through, the lead pastor was watching me to make sure that I was doing it the way he wanted. Or maybe he was screening your song to be sure it was appropriate for church. You know, we get some people that have weird ideas about what they ought to perform in church. And it wasn't even a worship song. It was a song to be performed. But you weren't worshiping God. You were just performing. Wow, that's disturbing. You know, the Bible says everything we do, we are to do to the glory of God. So I was sitting on a stool and I had my eyes open. And so he comes over and tells me, you need to close your eyes so that people are feeling the moment. And so I did. And it gave the vibe that he wanted. Um, your preacher may have gone overboard here, but I think he's probably just trying to do his job, which is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And he wanted you to be at your most effective when you were leading other people in worship. During worship sets, worship leaders are told whether they can say something, when they can say it, and how long they have to say it. Of course we do. We don't want the service becoming a mini-series so that people who have jobs on Sunday afternoon will not be yelled at by their boss for being late and they will feel welcome to come back. And the pastors have rehearsed and rehearsed their sermon like a speech. Well, I don't rehearse mine like speech, but I do research heavily and I have studied over it so that I have some idea what I'm going to say. After all, the scriptures do tell me to study to show myself approved unto God. Would you want me to get up there and lead somebody astray? Even down to the pause when they're going to get emotional. Now, this might be going overboard, but stop and think. They might be rehearsing the emotional parts so that they don't completely lose control of themselves and break down to the point that they can't preach. All of it is structured to emotionally manipulate you and make you feel like you belong. Be and why is it a bad thing for people to feel like that what is biblically correct is true? They do belong. God does want them. He is calling them to be his children. Because if you feel like you belong, you'll be more willing to serve or to give free labor. No, the goal is to have them give their life to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And you'll be loyal and you'll invite your friends and continue the cycle. Amen. Our goal is to bring people to Christ who in turn bring others to Christ so that the whole world may come to know him. And all of this for one reason. Money, baby. Hear that. In regard to this last statement, it really hurts to hear her say that the goal is money. Because majority of the pastors in this world, we're bivocational. In fact, 80 to 90% of us work at least one job, at least one job beside the church. And we would not have it any other way. We love what we do. And you're welcome in my church anytime, whether you give money or not.